Hey, what's going on everybody? Alex here with Freedom Mowers. I hope you all are doing well. We are actually going to be working on a freebie today. This is a Poulon Pro PP175 G42. I picked this up probably about two months ago. Someone had posted on Facebook Market for some scrap metal that they had. I don't know, there was like a couple pieces of like scaffolding type stuff and then next to it was this mower. You know, can I come get it? They sent me the address and uh, you know, they said you must take it all. So I, uh, I took the rest to the scrapyard and kept this here. They didn't know what was going on with it. Uh, they said that when they moved into their house, this mower was there and that was just this last year and they already had a mower, so they're just looking to clean up, basically. So, that's the backstory on it. Quite dirty, but we are rocking a 17.5 Briggs & Stratton Intec on here. Nikki carburetor. Got one tire that's totally flat, sinking into the ground. Give y'all a little overview of the whole machine. It looks to be pretty clean, I don't see there might be a little bit of some surface rust in the footwell areas. This is a six-speed tractor. They had some kind of plate back here. I don't know what that would have been for. I know sometimes they have the mounts for the uh, baggers, but this is like really thin sheet metal. So I don't know what that was for. Deck looks to be in okay shape. I haven't really looked at it too much. Blades are shot. Uh, that other tire's flat. Let's see, let's see. Well, at least it has an air filter. It's pretty nasty. Uh, let's see what else, what else. This is a 2015. And let's see if it has oil in it. Oh my lord. Y'all see how full that is up on the dipstick? Doesn't smell like gas though. I need to wipe that stick and just make sure, but that thing's like halfway up the stick. <laughs> Might be super over full. Um, well, let me get my compressor over here or a little hand pump. I'm gonna pump these tires up and we'll get this rolled over to the shop. I gotta pull out the Husqvarna zero turn that y'all just saw on my last video and uh, we'll get this pulled in and see what the heck's going on with it. All right, well, I got this beast on in the shop. Uh, it was fighting me all along the way after I got the tires aired up, and I realized when I was actually pulling it in the shop that I've got this wheel straight on this side now, but you can see the other front wheel is turned out like this, so it was pulling really hard. It's going to need an alignment. Another thing I noticed is that there is no battery, which I've actually been working on trying to revive this other battery over here, so... We'll see if that'll work, but also the seat safety switch uh, connector has been cut off and it's not going to work by just disconnecting it. So we're going to have to get that sorted out. The prongs are all bent on the actual seat safety. And I'm going to get y'all on the tripod. We'll check this oil again now that we got it on a flat surface. Hopefully start trying to get this engine turning over. Yeah. You guys can see it's up to basically the bottom line here so we'll go ahead and drain some of this oil out and to drain this out I actually made this a little while back I think I got the idea from Rayleigh's small engines it's got a great channel over there it basically just allows me to get underneath and then have like a little trough for the spout to pour down so I'm gonna get this emptied out and then we can move forward all right well still made a mess with that but it was a little less mess than normal but we are right up to the full line on here now at this point i think what we're gonna do is i will just go ahead and set the parking brake i gotta grab my jumper pack and we'll see if this will at least turn over with the key let's get this jumper pack hooked up it should be able to work with the parking brake set with that seat safety because it would still technically think that it's parked, but I think it would just turn off um, when we release the brake. So. Oh, my Lord. All right, parking brake is set. PTO is off. We'll go up to choke. 
All right, well, let's see if it'll turn over. Oh boy, heard a little, little pop. All right. Or the water just spraying out. Sweet. Well, I mean, it fired right up on choke. <laughs> Maybe we can run it for a minute. I did forget to tell y'all, there was like a, I don't know, probably a half a tank of gas in here and it smells, actually probably three quarters. It smells fresh. So, I don't know. Let's try it again. It's only running on choke. try it a couple more times just trying to cycle it with the choke on to see if it'll start pulling fuel but most likely those jets are clogged up gravy it's stinky in here this thing was just had a ton of water everywhere well so far so good i mean it cranked right up i would assume this has probably been sitting it looks like at least a year or two surprised that uh nikki carburetor was even running on choke i don't think it's gonna work gonna have to pull that carb off from there but that's awesome uh so far the engine sounds at least healthy all right so i would say our next step would just be go ahead and we'll take this carb off and get this cleaned up uh in the meantime i do need to feed the chicken she's a big helper here but she needs a good meal um in order to get these carburetors cleaned so annie what do you think oh sweetie what do you think about the Nikki carburetors versus the Walboro? Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking too. All right, well, let me get some tools out here and I'll let you take this carburetor off. All right, so on this one, we should just have four 3 8 bolts. There's one on this corner, one on the other corner, two in the front. We're gonna have to loosen those. That'll help, or that'll let us lift up the, uh, the top shroud because the intake manifold on this one it's hard to get off without having some room to pull up and then we'll get the two seven sixteenths bolts off pull that plastic and then we have our five sixteenths i think they are for the studs and loosen this clamp for the gas line so just going to tell y'all i'm gonna film it but i'll just put it on uh fast forward so you don't have to sit through the whole thing Also, let me get that carb off from here a lot of times these have these screws on here which are extremely difficult to get out without stripping so most of the time I'll just get a set of vice grips on here at least get them cracked loose I'll go ahead and take these bolts and that choke linkage out it was in the first hole let me 
to get this adjusted just right. There we go. That one cracked loose. That one cracked loose. That's the best way I've found to do these. And then we can just take a screwdriver and take it the rest of the way out. <laughs> Otherwise, you'll just end up stripping these things out and fighting them and fighting them. Done enough of them. Let's see what we look like in here. Try not to rip the O ring. Looks like it's already trying to stick. There we go. Oh, yeah, there's all kinds of crud in there. I don't know if you guys can see that build up there. It's that ethanol fuel. Oh, there's a spider in there. Y'all see that? It's crawling right across my hand. All right. Yeah, it's just like putty down in here. Let me get y'all in the light so you can see. There's all kinds of crud down in here. But hopefully our O-ring for, uh, for this piece is good because otherwise I don't have a rebuild kit and these things always leak it looks like it's not going to be too too bad it's just had a lot of that crud in there from the ethanol fuel so we'll just take our needle and seat yeah there's crud everywhere but this is the o-ring right here it's what seals a lot of times those get warped or they just get old and cracked and then they just leak by but yeah there's just this gummy stuff all over it i'm probably just throw this in the ultrasonic cleaner and then i'll just lightly blow it off with compressed air and we'll take it from there but yeah it looks like our main jet was not blocked but our low speeds were and just crud everywhere in here so let me just get everything thrown in the ultrasonic cleaner and hopefully we can get this thing going. All right, well for you guys, that should have probably been about two seconds to put on that carburetor. For me, I have been through, this will be the third carburetor I'm putting on it now. Uh, this was this is another OEM Nikki carburetor. Only difference on this one is it has the uh, straight fitting on it as opposed to the... Um, well this one yeah this one had a 90 degree fitting as well but i got some other carburetors over there they've all been giving me a fit um also let me show you guys what else was in here there was a ngk plug in here which is definitely not the right one for a single uh, cylinder intake and also it was like finger tight so I got the correct plug in there. I've got that all snugged up. And we're going to give this a try. So. Throttle. Brake set. success carburetor number three and I would much rather use an OEM if I have one available it's the original one I had taken it back off cleaned it again still couldn't get it to run without surging I believe that the idle jet is just kind of blocked in there there's really no way for me to get it I had another aftermarket one like an Amazon special same thing with that one couldn't figure out what was going on with it. Fixed this third one, went through it, cleaned it, 
and well you guys see the result so our next step is to after this we're going to be moving on to that seat uh getting that uh, harness all solved on there after that we should be able to at least test to see if the transmission is going to work and we'll have to look over the deck and then ultimately we'll end up doing the alignment on here and then getting the whole thing cleaned up so let's jump to this harness gonna see if we can save this seat switch which has four prongs on it they're all kind of bent over and then this harness down here that's been cut into we've got a gray green and black and I have a parts mill around here outside I'm gonna go show y'all we'll cut that harness off and then we'll just splice it in and see if this switch is gonna work and here is our donor we've got this one it has the loop on the one end four prong we've got green black and gray so we'll just go ahead and give ourselves a little bit of lead on those wires thank you and i got everything here set up i'm gonna go ahead and splice this in i probably won't show that but i just get everything stripped back on both ends and then i've just got these little butt connectors and my crimps so let me get that knocked out and I'll show y'all when I am done with that. Hopefully we can see if this safety switch works. Okay, well I've gone ahead and I got the prongs bent back into place on the actual switch and put in our new piece of harness. You guys can see where I just spliced in. Um, I will put some, some tape over these and get that all cleaned up. I just want to test everything, but this switch uh, it's a little different. Some of this, the seat safety switches, they actually go up into the seat pad and the pressure when you sit down on it um, will push the, the little button down. On this one, you have the plate that rides across the back and I'll show y'all. When you put pressure down on it, the plate actually basically pushes down on it. So, we'll go ahead and I'll get y'all set up and we can get this tested. Let's go ahead and see about taking this thing out for a spin. does not appear as if we are going into reverse. I think we just had an issue with this on, what was it, the Husqvarna? What do we got going on here? All right, let me take a look down here real quick and see what we can figure out. All right, so what I did is I just pulled up the battery tray on here you guys could see, uh, you know, it was going into forward gears, but even when I went back to neutral at one point, it tried to lunge forward. I was trying to see if there was an adjustment down here. Uh, I have it in reverse right now, and it still basically feels like it's in neutral, because when you put it up into, like, right around first gear, um, it'll catch. But what I did notice, after looking for a few minutes, right here there is an adjustment bolt i'm not sure probably a 9 16 or a 5 8 so i'm gonna get in there and gonna go ahead and adjust it i can see that there's a gap on one side and not the other so i think it's just out of a, out of adjustment so let me loosen that up make the adjustment and we'll see if we've got reverse 
All right, well, I'm glad that there was an adjustment on here because I thought maybe that one of the uh, shift rods maybe was bent. Um, but it did take me a while to get this all straightened out. I kept having to go back and forth with it. I think I've got it now. We're going to find out together. So, And I don't know if y'all saw last time I tried to crank this. Right when it hit that compression stroke, it tried to fight. But... Yeah, so it didn't do it that time. Making good progress. Got a good running engine so far. I might wait a little bit to do that valve adjustment because I want to see what's going on with this deck. I guess we can try to just kick the blades on. I know that it's like absolutely packed though. Let me drop it down and show y'all. It's like packed all the way around on the pulleys, but try to spin it over make sure it's not locked up or anything We got this back into the shop i am very pleased we got transmission working uh, reverse working we were able to verify that the deck engagement does work uh, i know the blades are shot and i think that's what's causing the vibration I'm gonna pull that off anyways because i want to clean it grease it repaint it all the good stuff and then um i didn't pull this back on the lift because I want to do the alignment now so you guys can see I got a jack underneath of it and I've got the wheel straight so this side looks good but you can see on 
this side, the problem that we're having, it's going way out there. So I believe if we, I think if you lift up on the arm, which I'll show y'all here in a minute, that brings it out. It'll basically tow out. So we need to go down with it. So let me show y'all. What happens is a lot of times these get banged into something, but uh, you guys will see here. I'm just going to do a little bit at a time, and you can basically, you guys will see how this works. So I'm just, I've got a jack under it. I've got it a little bit off the ground, and then we are just going to go ahead and basically put some pressure down, and y'all can basically watch this tilt in. So... Let me straighten this back up. So that brought it in a fair amount. I am going to go ahead and just work on the back side. And then I'll show you guys as well when I get done. But basically I just have to manipulate where the steering rod is. And we should be all set. So let me do a little tweaking on this. And then I'll show you guys when we get this dialed in. All right, well, I had to do just a little bit more bending on that side. And I ended up going the opposite direction with this side because I didn't want to go too far with the right side of the machine. And I think we've got that basically about as dialed in as I can get it. Now, the steering wheel, if you can see, was still off now. So... Just popped the uh, the cover off, half inch bolt, that comes right up. And then we're just left with our gear, or our little gear pattern there. We can just lift up on our steering wheel. And we'll get that centered up. And I would say everything looks good there. So go ahead and pop back in. I'll tighten up that, put the cover back on. And we should be pretty good as far as the steering on it. I am going to go ahead and grease the front end uh, since I've got the jack underneath of it. And then I'm going to bring this over to wash. So let me show you guys after I get this machine uh, washed up. And I'll get the deck off from here um, on these. If you guys have seen my other videos, pretty common mowing deck. We just have to release the cable that's going across over there we've got one pin here there's another bracket that goes up right here along the side and it's the same on both sides for those two we've got the front rod that needs to come down and should just be dropping the belt and then this deck can just slide right out from underneath so i'm gonna go ahead and get all the pins removed and slide this out and let's take a look at it all right well we got the mowing deck off from there and I'll go ahead and show you guys. There's some stuff that's all caught in the spindle down here. And there is not much left of the blades. This one's actually rolled over down. It's got a hook on it. And the other side is just about the same. But on the top side here, everything looks good. I've gone ahead and started scuffing down uh, the paint a little bit. There are no cracks or holes or anything like that. It just had a little bit of surface rust so i've got some metal primer and we're gonna do satin black on this mowing deck i had another rotted out mowing deck that had some good blades so i've gone ahead and balanced and sharpened these and threw a coat of some rust preventative on it so i'm gonna go ahead and get that all ready and get some paint on it get those blades installed and in the meantime we're going to check underneath of this and see how these belts and everything looks underneath. All right, well, I've got the paint on the mowing deck. And let's go ahead and take a look up underneath it here. So, so far, this looks pretty good. The drive belt on here looks to have probably been replaced at some point. Either that or this is a, you know, a lower hour machine. I don't know. Other than it being dirty, everything seems like it's pretty solid on here. Idler is just rubbing the belt a little bit. That's the noise you hear, but it's really smooth. Yeah, that one's smooth too. 
just quite a bit of dirt under here but overall all the pulleys look good so i would say that we're sitting pretty good i will have to check because i don't remember if i checked the brakes on here pretty much where we're at the deck belt was good on here drive belt looks good we've got all of our gears working Ugh, trying to get off this floor uh we got all of our gears working engines running good uh, I did go through as well and I was getting some, I was getting the lights fixed on here. I'll show y'all. I mended the, uh, the headlight harness and I got that all situated and looking good. Everything looks pretty factory there and they do work. I put some LED bulbs in here and... I had another spare tractor that has the light um, bezel. I'm working on stripping off the logo on that one. It was off from an Arians, but uh, I'm just slowly getting that label off. Let me show y'all real quick what the deck looks like. So this is what it looks like. It's looking pretty good. I will get the overspray off the stickers, but has a pretty nice um, satin look and everything's covered got the primer down first and I put two coats of paint so everything looks good on there I will be getting the deck mounted up and get the bezel back on the tractor and we should be able to finally pull this thing out and give it a good shakedown so. all right well I think I've got this thing pretty close to being done uh, I did run into a little bit of difficulty with trying to do the final cleaning on this uh, because our weather has been extremely cold and our water hose is frozen. You guys know I like to keep these as clean as possible and get them looking as good as possible. So I do have a little bit of touching up to do, but I did finish up with that deck and got that mounted and finished basically going through and cleaning up most of the machine. <clears throat> so if you guys remember I've done what three carburetors on here third one was a charm um, I did put fresh fuel in here it does need a new air filter which just like with the zero turn in the last video I'm gonna be doing a full service on this come springtime uh, so I'll do full uh, fuel filter um, new air filter probably new plug but I did have some good used blades that have a nice sharp edge on it. Uh, I threw some fix-a-flat in the front tires. And what else? We got that transmission issue figured out. I've got a used battery from 2019 in here, but seems to be doing well. I touched up the paint on the, the rear end here, and that looks good. So overall, I think we are in pretty good shape with this machine. It cleaned up really nice. I um, also went through, did the headlight lens on there. We've got new LED bulbs. And yeah, everything looks good. I'll crank it up, let you guys hear everything, and then I'll put y'all on the tripod and we'll do a little bit of cutting with it.
guys can see this thing turned out great really appreciate y'all tuning in as always our next project is actually in the shop and i just pulled it in there we've got a polaris four-wheeler that is in very rough shape and i got it super cheap so you guys will see it's a hot mess and i uh, thought you guys might like some four-wheeler content i actually have a couple more quads that we can work on as well so as always i really appreciate you guys tuning in like i said we've got this machine that was going to the scrapyard and got it turned around and running great and it'll get a full service and be a nice useful tool for the next owner come springtime so on that note let freedom ring let those small engines sing i'll see you all in the next one